Good evening and welcome to all of you to this very special occasion for our Saatchi Master of Arts in Art History commencement. My name is Steve Britton. I'm the president of Saatchi. It is an honor and a pleasure to convene this graduation ceremony of our art history students. And we are all here to celebrate the completion of a rather intensive year of study, research, exploration, culminating in the final defense of your thesis. I would like to extend a very warm welcome, I guess it is a super warm welcome, to friends and families uh, of our graduating, graduating students here and um, for coming all this way to share in this very important occasion with us. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, the director of the British Institute, Simon Gamel. Thank you so much for uh, coming out to, in the heat to, to join us for this occasion. Um, and also for your staff, to, to the British Institute staff for providing the space and helping us make this all work so well. Um, I would uh, also like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Mary Beckinsale, our former president at Saatchi, and uh, she is joining us uh, having played an instrumental role in setting up the Master in Art History program and bringing it to the level that it is today. So thank you, Mary. I think we can all say how much we appreciate the intensive effort of Saatchi's faculty who worked tirelessly with the art history students sharing their experience and providing their, short, their thoughtful guidance. I especially want to recognize Maria Antonia Rinaldi, the director of the master's program, and all the major professors, some of them are here tonight, uh, Dr. Helen Waterson, uh, who worked side by side with the students, Dr. Roberta Lapucci, uh, Alicia Pari, especially for her, we want to thank her for her work with and research with the US Consul General, the project that we worked on. For the work in the gallery project, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Spella Z uh, Sidar and uh, Kathleen Buckley, who also worked with her on setting up the exhibition. In New York, our Saatchi uh, gallery person, uh, Brianna Hayes, who coordinated and interviewed uh, and did set up all the interviews with the MFA student and for their exhibitions. And then there are all the important external advisors. Dr. Susan Grundy, who, uh, who is an advisor for Leah Strong. Uh, Dr. Lucia Giardino, advisor for Elizabeth Di Mauro. And Dr. Simone Giordani, advisor for Kathleen Buckley. And then in our library, we have, uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Roberta Mazzotti, who passionately helps the students with their research, and Donatella Ciratelli, who always is so knowledgeable and helpful to the students as well. And of course, Anne Pellegrini and Lou Lodge for the, who, organizing this event and who are the primary coordinators of the commencement. We also appreciate the help that Elizabeth Johnson and uh, Daniela Barbato and uh, Taylor Zerbi gave throughout the year. For the US Consul Project, a special thank you to Naomi Muirhead, who helped prepare the book for publication for their bicentennial, to Jacopo Santini, who took photos of the paintings uh, in the US Consulate that was studied by the students, and Chiara Tolleri, uh, who um, photographed the students when meeting with the Consul General, Benjamin Wallhauer. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank Bruno Spinazzola, who is uh, capturing this event on video and has always done a wonderful job for us in these events. Kathleen, Elizabeth, and Leah, I very much enjoyed hearing your presentations on Tuesday. What stands out is how all your professors and advisors used words like commendable, groundbreaking, and new discoveries when talking about your work. And they suggested that you find ways to publish your work in further in your thesis or continue to develop it even at the PhD level. These positive comments, I can assure you, were not made lightly and are most certainly deserved. What struck me was the high level of curiosity, persistent exploration when you examined your subjects with a magnifying glass and a critical eye. You demonstrated rigorous scholarship, leaving no stone unturned even as you were pressed for time. It was so uplifting to see the intelligence, quality of research, writing, documentation, and creative thought processes that you each brought to your subjects. As you were doing your research, you were constantly faced with the challenge of what can be considered a historical fact and the unknown gray areas 
where your interpretation must intervene. We discussed on Tuesday how in the search for truth and accuracy, one cannot ignore the influence and overwhelming weight that is carried by previous generations of art historians, critics and philosophers about the meaning and the origin, the authenticity of the artist's intent. And we cannot forget that these scholars brought about a mindset and a perception that is an expression of their time in that moment, layered with views that they too adopted from their predecessors. So historical writings are rich with subjectivity too, postulations, interpretations, and observations that are ostensibly represented as facts. We have to consider the degree to which these facts systematically laid out by art historians and critics alike resonate and connect with your own observations and hard sought after truth. It is only natural that as historians you try to transport yourselves back to the time and place you are researching and there is no escaping that you are connecting the dots of the past but very much through the lens and the context of the present. This emphasizes all the more that you're obligated, in a sense, to uh, unlock these mysteries of art all over again, peeling back the layers of history and extrapolating all you can find from looking at the work of art, really seeing it, so to speak, with new eyes. It can be argued that art historians too easily accept handed down interpretations and perceptions and don't necessarily challenge past understandings, judgments, and values. So I understand that it is, a very difficult, uh, it is very difficult to separate inherited values and examine things from scratch without contaminating your own particular point of view. Understanding an artwork, though, has, on its own merit, is important, and with its own primary form of materiality and expression, which will provide with an essential insight and meaning as well. So the artwork itself has inherent its own meaning uh, without the layers of history. This is where your creative insight and eye for detail and a heightened aesthetic sensibility count so much to your understanding of an artwork. With historical facts handed down to us, facts as we, in inverted commas, it naturally becomes increasingly difficult to make new discoveries, real discoveries, from new documents found, connections made, or simply finding something unique and anomaly in the brushstroke of the artist. I have to say that in so many ways you were able to make new observations and find and add your findings to, uh, to our understanding of art. This is why your teachers were particularly excited and I, uh, to see and, and that you had made these new, broke new ground and that indeed you had made a departure of what is known and you offered new insights. One last consideration. For centuries, scholarly research has been the domain of the single creative genius, the art in this case, the art historian who buries himself or herself in an artwork, producing a solitary analysis of that work. This is changing. I feel it changing and I see it changing. In the last weekend, I attended a symposium that was sponsored by Dr. Roberta Lapucci. She, she invited world-recognized art collectors writers, conservators, and art historians to discuss the life and works of Francisco Goya during the period that he lived in Italy. And I listened to the detailed scientific and diagnostic analysis to prove the provenance of authorship and authenticity of selected uh, Goya paintings now resting in the Louvre and the Prado and other museums throughout the world. These experts displayed a highly attuned aesthetic and objective understanding and deep knowledge of context of the context and history of the works. They all made their cases brilliantly. But then, sitting with one of the conservators after the symposium, she said something very important that stuck with me. While agreeing that the new knowledge brought by these experts that day was inspiring and of high value, she said, if we don't collaborate together on our research and findings and we spend too much focus on one person's points of view in isolation, we will only get so far. It is only when we put our thoughts and minds together and share ideas that we will truly move forward in our understanding and achieve consensus about the work of the artist. What I observed in the conversations that followed after your presentations on Tuesday was how much everyone shared their ideas their thoughts and questions and the expertise in a manner that clearly demonstrated the power of, the power of collaboration 
and show their invaluable strength in interpersonal skills, relational skills, support for each other, respect, and a bond that I saw that noticeably contributed to the enhancement of your ideas. So the quality of your work is, I am delighted to say, a positive reflection of the encouragement and guidance that your teachers provided to you, which is a wonderful segue to introducing the director of your program, Maria Antonia Rinaldi. <laughs> 